Good afternoon, everybody, um, and it's welcome from London, from Dexy, and welcome to our uh, second webinar of the series, How to Build Your First Robot. So hopefully you, you've all um, registered at Dexy, you know a little bit about what we do, and you're interested in web scraping. This is very much your chance to get a leg up in terms of how to use the tool um, from the experts. We have our Taha, who will present that today. So this is for, especially for, I should say, uh, people that are registered who really want to get going with their first robot, have not had a chance to do that, or maybe they uh, hit a small glitch and just wanted to, to really learn uh, quickly. So that's the objective of today. Um, you can obviously try out everything that you hear about today on the call for yourself using your free account. And then if you have a project uh, that's sort of slightly more commercial or larger scale, where you need to look at a subscription, you can also talk to us about that. We have a special offer at the moment, uh, which also includes getting help building your first robot. So there'll be some email addresses at the end if you're interested in doing that. So today specifically, as I say, it's um, how to build your first robot. So you'll learn how to add, copy, and move, and delete in a step process. Learn how to normalize the output of several robots and also remove, remove uh, duplication, which obviously saves a huge amount of time. Um, also handling pagination and using the loop through in, in the elements, which will become clear uh, in a minute when you see the demo. And we also will look at the out output formatting. So what I'd like to do now is just to get straight into it so that you can really see it for yourself. If you have questions, please type a question uh, into the chat and then we'll cover off questions on a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So we'll look forward to doing that in a minute. So I will now, without any further ado, pass over to Taha, who will now um, demonstrate how to build your first robot. Taha, over to you. Thanks. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar. As uh, Chris mentioned, uh, we're going to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, how to build uh, an extractor robot. And uh, in the meantime, we'll cover how to add, copy, move, and delete steps, how to handle uh, a common navigation pattern, which is uh, going through uh, a list of pages, and then navigating uh, to a details page uh, to collect more data. We'll also talk about uh, output formatting uh, using uh, the object output type and uh, network filters. So the website we're going to use for this demo is this, is this one, which lists uh, some brokers in uh, Dubai. So I'm going to uh, grab the URL I'm going to start from. And then in, pro in the project section, I'm going to choose new, create a new robot. I paste the URL in this field. And I can change the name if necessary. Uh, afterwards, I just press the create a new robot button. This will open the uh, extractor editor and the page uh, will uh, shortly load in the preview area. The section at the bottom is called the uh, dev tools. And uh, this is where you uh, actually uh, build the robot. So the page should uh, render shortly. And I'm going to discuss the first point that we we plan for this webinar, which is how to add steps. So uh, there are basically two styles. Uh, you can either uh, let the editor uh, suggest steps for you. And to do that, you just uh, uh, click on an element on the, in the preview area. And this drawer menu will show up and give you a few suggestions based on the markup structure of the element. So you can see that uh, since this is uh, a table uh, cell, I have uh, the extract table option among others. 
and basically you select uh, one option and the editor will uh, will add a step for you this is the first style and the second style is to work uh, at a lower level and to do this i can either use these green uh, plus uh, icons you can see when hovering over a step so basically you click on uh, the icon which opens the uh, select uh, the step selection dialog here you can see the full list of uh, available steps to handle multiple uh, common scenarios and when you select a step a short description will show up in this section ideally you would uh, go through the full list and read uh, each uh, description uh, to become familiar with uh, what's available in terms of uh, built-in steps so for example if i wanted to uh, extract uh, to uh, add an extract value step i select the, uh, the i select the, uh, this step then press ok and the editor will uh, request uh, additional uh, configuration options we'll see how to use the extract value step later uh, another option uh, the third option to uh, add steps is to use uh, the, uh, the, uh, is to actually just click on existing step and uh, choose either the, uh, the add step before or add step after option the same thing here if you click uh, for example uh, on add step after uh, it will uh, open this configuration uh, menu where you can choose uh, a different type of different step type so same thing uh, clicking on the type field opens the step selection dialog where i can choose a different uh, step type and press ok so basically this is how you uh, add steps either uh, by uh, relying on the editor or or using the green plus icon or just click on an existing step and choose uh, one of the uh, suggested option uh, options in this uh, drawer menu uh, if i want to uh, copy a step i just uh, select it and choose the copy option then i can paste it for example after save current output so i, I click on save current output and choose paste after if i wanted uh, to uh, move uh, this step i just click on it and choose uh, the cut option and i can paste, paste it for example before uh, before this step and finally if i just want to uh, delete step i, I uh, click on it and choose delete So I'm going to delete everything here. And uh, I'm going to restart the uh, robot. Let me just close and open the editor again. In this uh, demo, I'm going to use the uh, second style for adding steps. So I'm not going to rely on the editor too much. Uh, you can do, do that if you like, but uh, if you're familiar with uh, CSS, you can just uh, work at a lower level uh, as I'm going to do. So you can see that in the, on this uh, website, we have a list of pages to go through. and on each page there is uh, there are 10 entries uh, 10 brokers uh, each one has uh, a details page from which we're going to extract data 
So the first step in this case is to handle the uh, pagination. And to do that, I'm going to use the iterate, uh, the page uh, iteration step. So I'm just going to click on the, uh, on the next page button and see if the editor can suggest the page iteration step, which uh, it did in this case. So I'm going to choose it. And you can uh, inspect the uh, selector that was picked in this case. I think uh, it, uh, it looks good enough, so we'll keep it. And to interactively uh, evaluate the page iteration step, I'm going to press on the step forward button. So the, in the first iteration, the step basically does nothing. Otherwise, uh, the, first, uh, the first page would be skipped. But to test that uh, the step can actually load uh, the following page, I'm going to uh, click on this uh, small arrow button and uh, click on step forward again. Since the editor is loading uh, a new page, uh, this means that uh, the step uh, worked fine. We'll just check by, uh, by looking at the uh, pagination uh, widget. And the second page uh, link is active, so the uh, page iteration step is working fine in this case. And we can uh, move to the next step, which is going through the 10 entries on each page. And for that, I'm going to use a loop through elements step. So I hover over save current output, uh, click on uh, the screen icon on the left, uh, scroll down in the elements list to find the loop through elements option, and then press OK. So for the element path, mm -hmm. I'm going to quickly check the markup of the page. I'll first take the ID of the table and this should be an appropriate selector in this case. So I'm going to check that uh, the loop through element step can find the 10 rows in the table, and it can in this case. So the selector that I specified uh, is fine. So basically this is uh, how you handle uh, this common, uh, common pattern of, uh, pag of pagination and, uh, and uh, and the list of uh, entries on uh, each page with a page iteration step and uh, a loop. We can actually now uh, go to the next step, which is navigating to each uh, details page. So what the loop step is going to do is push uh, the rows of the table into scope uh, one by one. You can see the first row highlighted. Uh, what, what we mean by scope is the uh, section of the page in which uh, the robot is going to look for elements from now on. So for example, if I want, uh, if, I, uh, if I add, for example, uh, a click element steps since uh, we need it in this case. And let me check quickly the page mark. So this is uh, an H2 header. If I try, for example, to uh, select this element right now, it won't find it. Because from now on, the uh, robot is looking for elements only within this, uh, this row, and uh, this uh, table row. And it doesn't uh, contain uh, an H2 header in this case, so it can't find uh, any elements that match uh, the specified uh, selector. So this is what we mean by scope. Basically, it's uh, the section of the page 
uh, in which uh, the uh, robot is going to look for elements. I can uh, break from uh, the scope uh, with the parent uh, pseudo selector if necessary. But in this case, I just need to click on the uh, page details link, which is in the last cell. So I'm going to specify uh, TD last A as a selector. So here, the last part isn't uh, standard CSS. Uh, this is what uh, what we refer to as uh, pseudo selectors, which is a list of selectors that uh, that work only within uh, extractor robots and are men are uh, are useful uh, whenever uh, standard CSS isn't uh, powerful enough. So you can find uh, the full list uh, of pseudo selectors in this help article. In this case, I used the uh, last pseudo selector to quickly uh, select the last cell in each uh, row. And since this is a click element step, you have the option of using uh, JavaScript clicks or not. Uh, usually, uh, a JavaScript click is uh, safer in case, for example, uh, if there is a pop-up pop uh, that showed up when opening the page. Uh, a JavaScript click will work, but a regular click uh, won't work since the pop-up will get it will get uh, in its way. So I uh, I checked the use JavaScript click option in this case. Then I can press OK. And to evaluate the click element step, I I press on the step forward button, and this will load the uh, details page. Now we can start actually extracting data. So you can see that for each listing, there is uh, information about the office and information about uh, brokers in this table. We'll start by, with the office details. We can, in this case, uh, use the first style to add steps, which is uh, relying on the editor. Basically, I click on the uh, cell and on the element that contains the data. And from this uh, drawer menu, I choose the extract from element option, which will uh, request additional configuration options. Uh, first, the name of the output field. In this case, it's the office number. Uh, this is uh, text data, so I'm not going to change the uh, type of the output field. And then I can press OK, which will, and the editor will uh, add an extract value step, add the uh, output field that I specified, and evaluate uh, the step. So if I switch to the results tab, I can see the uh, content of the selected element uh, that has been extracted, but with uh, additional uh, HTML markup in the data. So we're going to use uh, output formatting to strip it. I basically, I click on the step, then choose the edit option, and I scroll down to the output formatting option. So I'm going to grab Uh, let me just quickly reevaluate the step to grab the the value that was extracted. Just to show you how output formatting works. So in this case, I have uh, inline uh, inline uh, HTML, and I can uh, remove it using uh, the remove uh, HTML option. So you can see that uh, the span uh, markup has been uh, removed in the exa example output. And just in case there is uh, extra white space around the value, 
I'm going to also add the uh, trim option. So in extracting text data, you usually uh, use these two options uh, to strip any inline uh, markup and to remove uh, extra white space. Now I press OK to persist the changes. And by evaluating uh, the step again, we should get only the uh, the inner text of the element without the uh, inline markup. So when it comes to output formatting, several options are uh, available. Uh, you, you can, uh, if you're extracting a number, uh, a number uh, in float format, you can uh, use number ceiling to uh, to round it. You can also cut cut text uh, left or right. Uh, we support also uh, date formatting, uh, matching uh, regular expressions. Uh, prefixing text or uh, suffixing uh, te uh, text with uh, with additional uh, text, and the uppercase option. The full list is documented in the uh, in the uh, support article. So I just search for output. And in this article you'll find the uh, full list of uh, available options with a description of what uh, each option uh, can do. So I relied on the editor to extract uh, the first piece of information. Uh, now I can, I can just start uh, reusing uh, this step. So I just uh, click on it, choose copy, and then I paste it before save current output. The next piece of, uh, of information is the office name. So I'm going to add another output field. Same thing, this is a text data. So I'm not going to change the, uh, the type. Then I edit the, the extract value step, change the output field. Uh, also need to change the uh, selector. In this case, it should be so. This is a standard uh, CSS, but I can uh, use the available pseudo selectors to. Uh, to accurately uh, match uh, the element I'm uh, looking for. In this case, it's uh, a table cell that has uh, office name as text. So I'm going to use the text is uh, pseudo selector. And then to uh, match the element that's uh, after it, I'm going to use the next pseudo selector. So this is uh, much safer than uh, standard CSS. In case, uh, in case the, uh, the piece of uh, information won't be available every time. And, and uh, if that's the case, I'm going to change the um, error handling mode. So I'm going to expand the uh, general uh, accordion and you can see that uh, in the error handling mode, it's by default stop and fail. But uh, just in case this piece of, uh, of information isn't uh, always uh, available, I'm going to change the mode to ignore and continue. This way the robot won't fail if uh, the target element isn't found. And I'm going to, uh, to keep the same output formatting options, then press OK. And we can test uh, the second uh, step to see if uh, everything is working, which uh, in this case uh, it is. And they can keep add uh, as many uh, data extraction steps as necessary. <clears throat> so we can 
grab the uh, phone number, the fax and the issue date, for example. So I'm going to add uh, three output fields. And for each uh, piece of information, I'm going to just copy uh, an extract value step and make the necessary changes in terms of output field and select. Same thing for the uh, fax number. And for the issue date. I made the type on the output field name. So it's, uh, it's kind of straightforward when it comes to text data. You just need to get, uh, to get the element path or the selector correct. This, is, uh, this covers uh, the office details uh, information. And we can now move to the uh, broker's uh, information which is listed uh, in a table at the bottom of the, each uh, details page. And to do that, we're going to use the object output type, since uh, each listing can feature uh, multiple uh, brokers. So let me find an example with uh, multiple brokers on the same page. Uh, this is uh, an example of a listing with uh, multiple uh, brokers on the same page. And uh, if I wasn't going to uh, use the object uh, output type, I would either save a separate record for each uh, broker and then uh, group the data later, or I will have to add as many output fields as uh, necessary to cover uh, to cover the uh, all the uh, all the brokers, which would be uh, quite cumbersome in terms of number of uh, output fields and the steps. So I'm going to just uh, use the object output type. So I switch to the Outputs tab and add a new field. I'm going to call it a broker. And here I'm going to change the type to, uh, the type to uh, object. 
and since uh, each uh, listing can feature multiple uh, brokers, I'm going to check the uh, list uh, checkbox to basically say uh, this uh, field uh, will con um, can contain uh, a list of uh, objects. And here each uh, broker has uh, uh, BRN number, the name, uh, the phone, uh, the mobile, and the email. So I'm going to add those fields in the uh, object. Now I can uh, go back to the steps tab. And same thing, uh, uh, a listing might also not, uh, not feature uh, any uh, brokers. So I need to take that into account. And to do that, I'm going to use branches. So uh, a, uh, a best practice when it comes to branches is uh, to start them with a do nothing step. So I'm going to add the do nothing step. And in this case, uh, uh, a, list, uh, a details page might, might contain uh, some listings, uh, uh, might contain uh, broker's information, or it might not. So I'm going to, uh, to choose the branching mode play until first successful branch. So if, uh, if the details page uh, contains uh, broker's information, the robot will uh, evaluate the branch that handles uh, extracti extracting uh, their data. And if the details page doesn't feature uh, broker's information, uh, the robot will uh, skip that branch to a second one that uh, just uh, saves the current output. So I'm going to add uh, a secondary branch that just saves the current output. So I copy it the existing save current output step and I click on uh, do nothing and choose the paste as branch option. So this is the secondary branch in case the primary one uh, is going to fail. And to actually collect uh, the broker's information. I'm going to start with the loop step since each page might feature multiple brokers. And in error handling, I'm going to choose the uh, skip current branch option. This means that uh, if this uh, step doesn't find uh, uh, the target elements uh, it's uh, looking for, uh, the robot will, uh, will skip uh, to, uh, to the second branch. So the selector that I'm going to use in this case. This selector should work fine. And here we have a single uh, broker, so the loop uh, found it. And to quickly uh, explain again what I'm doing here, uh, basically I have two branches after this uh, do nothing step. Uh, the primary branch will try to extract the broker's data and save it. Uh, the second branch will just save uh, the current output if this uh, loop step uh, fails. So now I can uh, start extracting uh, the broker's data, which is straight straightforward in this case since we're dealing with uh, with the standard standard uh, HTML table. So I'm going to uh, copy this extract value step and paste it before save current output. And 
And for the selector, I'm going to stick to standard CSS. And to uh, change the output type, I click on the output uh, field. And you can see that for uh, objects, uh, the output field name is the name of the object. Uh, dot name of the output field. So uh, I'm going to choose broker dot uh, brn and keep uh, the uh, usual uh, output formatting options. And I'm going to quickly test this. As you can see, it's uh, working as expected. Then I just need to add uh, four additional extract value steps for the remaining uh, cells in each row. So this is for the name, and we need the second cell in the table. <coughs> then the phone number. The mobile and finally the email. And to see the robot in uh, action, I can just uh, select save current output scroll down in the uh, list of options and choose play to this step. And you can see that uh, the robot extracted, extracted the broker information as, uh, as an object. And the data looks good. So now we can evaluate uh, safe current output, which is a mandatory step. Since uh, everything uh, a robot does is explicit, ex uh, including uh, persisting the extracted data. This way, the robot will uh, save uh, the extracted uh, extracted information from the first listing and create a new row for the second one. This will also make it uh, go back to the loop step and process the second uh, listing on the page. So same thing, I'd, uh, I can uh, press this uh, start stop button to interactively uh, test the robot in the editor. Of course, this is uh, only meant for uh, small tests. You can't run a full execution uh, in editor mode. You need to do that in the background. And I think that uh, this implementation is uh, robust enough, so I'm going to uh, stop the uh, interactive evaluation. And we are going to uh, talk about the final point, which is network filters. So by default, the uh, robot will, uh, will download all the resources that the website needs, but I can add a few filters to, to enhance, enhance uh, its performance. And to do that, I'm going to uh, uh, pick this uh, details page. Then I open uh, the dev tools of my browser, switch to the network tab. Then I just reload the page. Wait for all the resources to complete. Then I can sort them uh, by time from uh, biggest to smallest. Then I just go to, through these uh, requests and see if I can uh, block uh, the resource in question. So this is the uh, HTML document 
that contains the data so I can't block it. Uh, this is <coughs> this is a JavaScript library that the page is using. Some uh, probably so it's probably necessary in this case. I'm going to skip uh, JavaScript resources. Uh, CSS2 uh, can be skipped since uh, blocking uh, CSS won't have a significant uh, performance impact. Uh, this is a pink uh, image, so we can block it. So I'm going to uh, uh, switch to the network tab in the editor, add the new filter, and in the type, I'm going to just choose block requests. So there are uh, different options, but the most uh, the option that has a significant uh, impact in terms of uh, speed is block requests because it will it will make it will force the uh, robot to skip uh, downloading the resource in question. And in the uh, pat URL pattern, I'm going to uh, specify dot uh, png. Uh, this way the uh, robot will block all uh, all images of uh, this type so if i choose if i choose <coughs> from now on the uh, robot won't uh, download uh, png images and then i can uh, go back to the uh, to the uh, network bar, uh, network tab of uh, the browser dev tools and uh, basically go through the list of uh, resources to see if I can block uh, additional uh, requests. Uh, there is some GIF images, so I'm going to block them too. Same thing, I add a new filter, ch choose the block requests uh, option, and specify the U URL button. So in terms of patterns, uh, uh, treated at as a string contains. It's not a regular expression pattern. So I didn't escape uh, the dot in this case. Basically, uh, any URL that contains uh, this string will be uh, blocked. Fonts also can be blocked. So I'm going to add another filter for fonts jpeg images we can block them too and any filter that you'd uh, add will uh, save a few milliseconds uh, on each page load so this is the process of uh, adding network filters and after uh, after uh, doing this, I need to uh, close the robot and uh, open it again, and test uh, things interactively again to see if uh, the network filters that I created uh, might be uh, interfering with the, the data extraction process. In that case, you'll need to review the filters that you've added. If everything works uh, works as expected again, then you can just uh, can just keep all the network filters. As you can see, the robot is still working fine. It can still extract all the uh, data. So I'm, I can stop the interactive uh, interactive evaluation. And basically, you can say that now we have uh, a working robot that can be tested in the background. So to do that, I'm going to close the editor. 
and with uh, the robot selected I can press this uh, new run button another option would be to use this uh, new menu I click on new create new run uh, I can change the name if necessary then I can press continue and with uh, the run selected I can either uh, directly press uh, execute now or open the run uh, and press uh, execute now in the upper right uh, corner or just switch uh, switch to the execution tab and press execute now and the system will start uh, running the robot in the background and if i go to the executions page we should start uh, seeing data in a few seconds. So we, we, we saw the robot working, working fine uh, in editor mode. And when running uh, an execution, you should also get a successful execution. Otherwise, uh, you'll get uh, a failure report, report and you'll be able to uh, debug, uh, debug what went uh, wrong exactly and fix, fix your uh, implementation. So basically the uh, robot, the execution now will uh, keep running until uh, completion. That might uh, take a few minutes. So I'm going to uh, stop it. And suppose that uh, it finished uh, running successfully. And in that case, uh, a download button will uh, show up in the uh, upper right uh, corner of the execution view. And you can download the data in different formats. Uh, including Excel and CSV. Your dashboard will also uh, list uh, this execution in the recently completed section. If it was uh, still running, then it will be uh, listed in the current executions uh, section. I hope this uh, was clear enough uh, in terms of how to build uh, extractor robots. And you can now uh take a few questions if uh yeah thanks taha i can take it from here so yeah that that concludes on the demonstration part uh thanks very much taha for that uh, indeed we have time for a few questions any we don't get answered then you can see on the screen a support email please do send an email to either of those addresses and i'll make sure that you get your your question answered i've had a few in already Taha, so perhaps uh, we could have a quick look at those um, initially. So the first question is, um, how can you handle pagination when there isn't a next page link, just some page numbers? Uh, in this case, if, uh, if uh, there isn't uh, a next page uh, button or link, then the page uh, iteration step uh, just needs to point to the second uh, second uh, page in the list. Uh, second, uh, just to the following uh, page uh, link. Uh, this is usually uh, usually uh, possible, since uh, the, the since the current uh, page will have uh, will have a slightly different uh, markup, uh, a slightly different uh, layout. Uh, in terms of uh, CSS, allowing you to uh, to uh, accurately uh, select it. Uh, another option, if uh, if uh, there are, uh, if the number of pages uh, is small, and uh, the full uh, list of pages uh, links is uh, available, you just uh, use uh, loop through LM step uh, to click on each uh, page link. Excellent, thank you for that, Taha. Um, another question, um, is adding network filters a mandatory step when building a robot? Uh, you don't need uh, network filters to build a working robot, 
but uh, if you uh, care about uh, execution execution uh, speed and uh, that's probably uh, something that uh, you need to care about uh, then uh, ideally you'd add uh, network filters uh, to all the the extractor robots that you're going to build because uh, in terms of execution time you can uh, sometimes uh, cut it uh, in half go for example from one, one hour to uh, just uh, 30 minutes in uh, in some edge cases uh, network filters are necessary for uh, the robot to work this is usually the case with with websites that uh, download uh, download a large number of resources sometimes you you find websites that make uh, more than uh, 500 uh, http requests uh, per page and that's uh, that's uh, quite a lot but you don't uh, need them uh, every time. Excellent, thank you for the answer. Um, Peter has asked, the editor has a The versions, versions tab, tab. Uh, lists uh, the 10 most uh, recent uh, versions of uh, the robot. It's like, uh, it's like source control for code, but just a bit more simple. And for example, if, uh, if you built a working version a few weeks ago, uh, then made some, some changes that uh, broke uh, the robot and you want to restore that particular version, then you just uh, go to the uh, versions tab, uh, select uh, the one that you want to uh, restore and click on uh, this arrow button. And the version Good. in question would be restored. Okay. As I mentioned, as I mentioned, you just uh, get access to the ten most recent uh, versions. Okay, very, very good. Um, another question: um, Can you run JavaScript code in an extractor robot? Uh, you can do that if you uh, if you want to uh, extract data using uh, JavaScript then you can use uh, the extract value through JavaScript step, which basically runs, uh, runs a snippet of uh, JavaScript that you'll uh, paste in the JavaScript field and uh, save the uh, value that the code returns in the specified uh, output field. Uh, if you don't uh, want to uh, save data, but just run uh, some uh, JavaScript code, then uh, you can use the execute JavaScript uh, step, which is in the JavaScript uh, group. And this step will just uh, evaluate the, uh, uh, the uh, GS snippet that uh, you paste in the JavaScript field without, uh, without extracting data. So yes, you can uh, run JavaScript in uh, extractor robots. Very good, okay. Um, I just sent you one last question, Taha, in the, in the chat box. I didn't fully understand the question, but if you want to answer that, feel free. If not, just let me know and then we can conclude. Taha, did you see that? Yeah, I'm uh, reading the question. So what is the main difference? with Selenium ID, accept more developed steps, definitions, and UI visualization from technical point of view. Yeah, so the main difference is that uh, Selenium is, uh, is for uh, developers. So you need to, uh, you need to uh, either uh, be familiar with the uh, programming uh, language uh, that, uh, that Selenium has a library for, to be able to write uh, Selenium scripts or have a developer that's, uh, that can uh, write uh, the scripts for you. So that's the main difference. Uh, for, with extractors, you don't need uh, programming language. You just uh, use the WYSIWYG editor to, uh, to do what uh, Selenium would uh, allow you to do uh, with code. So it's a question of uh, of how you want to uh, to handle the task at hand. Okay. 
Selenium, uh, Selenium requires writing code. With uh, with uh, Extractor Robust, you don't need to uh, you don't uh, you don't need uh, developers. Good. Thank you very much, Taha. That concludes on the questions, everybody. Um, if you do have any other questions, as I say, just drop a, a note to us in the in the questions box, and we'll we'll respond to those afterwards. Um, as I said, hopefully that gives you a really good leg up in terms of how you can use Dexy, get you going. Um, if you start a bigger project, please let me know, and then uh, I can talk to you about our various um, subscription levels, which are on the on the screen now. Um, and at the moment, we have an offer on if you're if you're developing your first robot, then we will assist you with that. Um, just before we go, I would like to just do a quick poll to see how valuable that was today. So I'm going to launch that now. If you would, it's only three questions. If you would just um, uh, answer those, I'd be eternally grateful. And then um, once you've done that, we will, we will wrap it up. So I'm launching the poll now, if you would like to answer. And I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Thank you. Ten more seconds, thank you. That's very kind of you, I really appreciate that. Um, and we will um, certainly be letting you know about our next uh, webinar, which is coming up. Uh, the recording will also be available for your colleagues that couldn't make today. I know that some of you are sharing the room, so um, uh, good luck to everybody and I'll give you some of your time back on the day. Thanks very much and I'll conclude it there and we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye.